What if you could fire a laser at the sky and make it rain? Oh, that sounds more interesting. Dave Malkoff explains. Just another stormy, wet afternoon in central Florida. But what if you could pick up all this rain and move it where it's needed? Texas or California? What if a laser could start the rain? So you can almost use it to set it off. Matt Mills got into lasers as a kid. It's just innately cool. Now he's part of a team of scientists and military backers on the cutting edge of a new technology, making lasers powerful enough to reach up here into the sky where a thunderstorm is just about to start. In the near future, a push button storm starter could be a real thing. Just imagining this situation, if there was a rain cloud that was gonna pass over an area of drought and not rain, you could, you know, theoretically induce the rain and get the rain where it's needed. That storm starter isn't the laser beam itself, but rather a popping energy that comes off of much higher power beams than this one. The problem is those pops have always had trouble getting into the sky. Now Matt has discovered a way to get the laser to pop all the way in the clouds. In theory, that's what starts a storm. We created a cloud of our own behind Matt's lab. A few months ago, Matt's colleagues in Arizona got this working experimentally. The next step is to get it to work in the sky. The particles in the air are rubbing together, forming static electricity, and the conditions are now right. And they just need to be triggered now. Does this concern you that you may be messing with Mother Nature and doing something that you don't completely understand up here in the cloud? I, I, I mean, I suppose that's always a danger, but we're not even near to the case where it could be dangerous yet, so not too much. Right it's almost like an on-off switch for a thunderstorm. That's the idea behind it. Right here in the cloud. Yep. In Orlando, Dave Malkoff, The Weather Channel. Here, an artist's projection of the president's vision. Banning into space defense to protect the country from nuclear devastation. U.S. spy satellites would watch the world below, detect Soviet missiles blasting off, compute the position and speed of each missile, alert battle stations in space on Earth. The first response, space-based kinetic energy weapons fire high-speed projectiles from hypervelocity guns intercepting enemy missiles as they are boosted through the atmosphere. Popped up into space, Earth-based nuclear-powered X-ray lasers fire their radioactive rays. Attack rays from land-based Exomer lasers are redirected by huge mirrors orbiting in space. Chemical lasers fire beams that burn through the shell of the onrushing missile. Particle beam weapons with pulsing rays join the attack. Still over the atmosphere, the missile bus ejects its cargo. Multiple nuclear warheads. As the remaining Soviet missiles now arc towards the U.S., ground-based projectiles are volleyed into space. Their giant steel ribs shatter the enemy weapons. The final minute. The surviving warheads enter the atmosphere above the United States, are attacked by laser-equipped planes. Earth-based lasers and ABM rockets eliminate the last warheads. The administration's original claim for the Strategic Defense Initiative was that it would be a perfect... Never forget this bill in 2001 referred to chemtrails as an exotic weapon. Again, this is HR, stands for House of Representatives, HR 2977, okay? And this is about a bill to stop and restrict weapons in space. Scroll down, you will soon see exotic weapon systems, such as electronic, psychotronic, and information weapons. Two, chemtrails. Three, High altitude ultra low frequency weapons, which is actually basically 5G like weapons, EMF weapons, more like 3G, 2G. 
Boom, laser weapons. Well, instead of doing a rain dance, we physicists are firing trillion watt lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. This is potentially a game changer. But this is experimental. It's experimental. However, in the laboratory so far, it works. When you have water vapor and you have dust particles or ice crystals, you can precipitate rain. It condenses around the seeds. These seeds can also be created by laser beams. By firing trillion watt lasers, you rip apart the electrons, creating what are called ions. And these ions act like seeds, like dust particles, bringing down rain and even lightning. Any, go ahead. Well, I, I, this is fascinates me in part because, too, I remember reading the stories that China had used this during the Olympics, that the USSR had used this after Chernobyl to create rain clouds. I mean, w did those really work then? We have some of these capabilities now? Even in the 60s, the CIA used this to uh, bring down monsoons during the Vietnam War to wash out the Viet Cong. Boom. Laser weapons, strategic, theater, tactical, or extraterrestrial weapons, and chemical biological and environment and climate or tectonic weapons which they have all of this means they can make earthquakes they can make hurricanes this bill never passed this was a house of representative trying to get the word out about this stuff it's right here plain to see look up these terms look up these keywords look up this bill hr 2977 this is real people i lived about How many of you know what chemtrails are? Nobody. The military and some commercial planes are spraying us with what are called chemtrails. I want you to look at the... And oftentimes, before there's a weather front, uh, there are heavy assaults uh, from these planes just before a weather front has changed and comes in. Military and some commercial jets have been fitted with huge barrels of at least 49 different kinds of documented chemical poisons. Among other documented ingredients in this toxic man-made clouds are, path are pathogenic molds, fungi, weaponized viruses and made in some places like uh, of the secret site at Fort Detrick, Maryland, which is supposed to be a cancer site, but there are a number of scholars and professors tracking this that have big questions about this. Barium and nano particles. What do these do to the human body? Barium is an alkaline earth mineral. It was discovered in 1774. At low doses, it can act as a muscle stimulant. At high doses, it detrimentally affects the heart and the nervous system. Barium is toxic to all mammals, and that means not just humans. Aluminum, which is the most abundant metal in the earth's crust, is known to diminish kidney function, and destroy brain cells and cognitive function. Just think about it. Just between the aluminum and the mercury that we're breathing all the time, we've got already a serious issue about uh, brain function and cognitive function. There is also documented evidence that the aluminum in chemtrails is released as nanoparticles and that when they reach the Earth environment for wildlife, in lakes and streams, it's causing serious uh, problems with wildlife there. Researchers are also finding that nanoparticles interfere with the growth of plants. Nanotechnology is totally unre unregulated. The real reason why we see this ripple effect happening in the sky is going to blow your mind. Now, this is what resonant frequencies look like when they are pitched into water. So different frequencies are being pitched into this water and it creates different shapes and different patterns. Now, let's take a look at what this frequency does to sand, 4129. 
See this pattern? Looks very similar to this pattern now, doesn't it? This pattern happens because they are beaming ELF frequencies into the sky. And this is exactly what they are using to do this. It is called HARP and it's run by the military. Now you can literally go outside and observe this yourself. They drop chemicals from planes, then they use HARP to disperse those chemicals and block out the sun. All you gotta do is look into this stuff. They literally admit they're spraying millions of tons of chemicals into the atmosphere to block out the sun. And you can go look up the hundreds of patents the US has on weather control and doing exactly what I'm telling you. This is what a normal sky looks like, guys. And this is what weather modification looks like. This is why you don't see skies like this in Mexico because they ban weather modification. They put this shit right in your face of all of your favorite TV show. Now, the reason I make these videos is because the collective consciousness is shifting. We could be one person waking up a way that will shift the collective consciousness and in turn take down our suppressors. They have been deceiving you your whole lives and the real truth to everything is found within. Peace and love.